one time I left a bunch of supers in my car, right? I collected the honey from Carney, used to have bees at Carney. Had them in my car, left them in the back, back of my hatchback, and uh, went inside for like 15 minutes. All the bees I have here, found it, and within like, within 15 minutes I had about 20,000 bees in the car, right? And how do you get them out now, right? So I, uh, I just uh, waited until it was dark, I'd open up the hatch, and they all flew out at night, and then they took out the, took out the honey supers in the dark. But that was everything I learned from mistakes, basically. Don't do that, never do that again, so. <laughs> Hi, I'm PJ Martin. I'm a hobbyist beekeeper and we're here to look at some beehives. Bees are important because they are responsible, responsible for up to two-thirds of the food you eat or more. So bees pollinate almost every flowering thing. So we're going to go take a look at some bees, open up these beehives and see what they're up to and see if they need a little bit more room and check to make sure everything's healthy in there. Everything's going as planned. Let me go do another thing. I'm going to give me this line up. I have a smoker. Here we go. I'm going to light this up. I use pine needles. They light pretty quickly and make a lot of smoke. If you use the smoke, it calms down the bees. Because number one, it masks an alarm pheromone that they may give off when you go in there. And also in the wild, bees live in trees, hollowed out trees, smoking out. So this simulates a fire. And then when there is a fire, they gather all their personal belongings and leave. The only personal belonging that they have is honey. So then they gorge on honey and they become too busy and too fat to actually sting you. So this masks the alarm pheromone and just keeps them busy while you go through the hive. So let me get my more pine needle. To give them a little, a little smoking. Oh, these are busy. These are packed. Just to get them to go down a little bit. They're very docile. They're not. Oh, here you go. Here's a drone. This is a male bee. They don't sting. Boom. The drones pretty the drones pretty much don't do anything except mate with the queen in the springtime. And they pretty much do the male bees. They pr pretty much all summer long they just sit around and eat. <laughs> so uh, the female bees, these bees, they see on top are all the workers. They do all the work in the hive. They have a, they have a caste system. When the bees are first born. They're in charge of just cleaning up the cells and then they're in charge of like a week or so later they're in charge of uh, taking care of the baby bees they're called nurse bees and then they uh, become foragers they only live four to six weeks so bees the worker bees that are all female they don't they don't actually collect honey they collect nectar from the flowers and they bring it back to the beehive and they fan it with their wings and they actually ripen it to get it down to about 12% moisture around there somewhere, 14, 12%. See this thing's packed, see how they capped it with the wax. That's all honey under there. I think I squished one back. See this? That, that is, that's the good stuff. That's good. It's mostly from trees, they get most of their, uh, they're honey from trees. Let's see, they're just from trees. From trees, from uh, black locust, linden, and tulip poplar. Let me get the. <laughs> see, this 
cells that aren't sealed, that's nectar. Now they sit on top of that and they fan it off to get the moist to get the water out of it. And then it becomes honey and then they seal it. Here, here's a drone. This is male bees. They they do not sting. They only mate with the queen in the spring and they just kind of hang out and eat. Because they're they're dudes, you know. <clears throat> That's what dudes do. Hang out, they eat. <laughs> well the females go out and do all the work. Sorry. Sorry guys. <laughs> People always ask, oh, where's the queen? Show me the queen. Find the queen. With a hive this big, I mean, there's probably 50,000, 60,000 bees in here. So, basically, as long as I see that some, there's some kind of bee brood in here, which this is, these, this, these cap beige cells are drone brood. See, that this guy right here, that's a drone. These are ready to hatch out male bees. So, the bees use the pollen as a protein source, they use the honey as a carbohydrate. Okay, so the bees bring in, they're, they're told to either bring in honey or pollen. Yeah, they, uh, I wish I could have found one doing a bee dance. I actually do a dance if they find a really good spot to forage. They, uh, they will tell the other bees by doing a circle dance where they go in a circle and at some point they waggle. If the bee waggles straight up, that means fly directly towards the sun and that's where it is. Yeah, they also have a static, they're statically charged and have a magnetic field so they always know where north is. And another, so uh, they do the waggle dance, depending upon the ag angle of the waggle, they are telling the, the other bees, they tell them, hey, go 20 degrees left of the sun, and that's where, where to find the, that's where the money spot is. That's where the, you know, that's where the gold mine is. They find something really good, basically. This thing loaded. Give you this piece. You can do. Oh, that's a dead guy. Sorry, sorry, guy. Whoops. Let me put this aside. It's me, guys. Delicious. Then they did a study that it actually did, uh, they can feel some kind of empathy, bees. They, have some, they do a facial recognition, too. And I know they recognize me because I know that they, uh, they have an acute sense of smell. So I think that's why they don't go after me is another thing, because they know I come out here and I'm not here to bother them, you know? They go, it's that guy. I think they smell me. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is they, bees do, they get pests. And here's one of them. Where'd that little sucker go? Ran on me. There it is. Hive beetles. I get hive beetles. See it? A little black beetle. Oh, I see a little black on me. This one right here. Come here, sucker. See it? Am I gonna torture you? No. They uh, the bees actually trap them. They'll contain them in an area where they'll actually seal it off like a prison. Okay. Hive beetles. The hive beetles, they trap the hive beetles. They can contain them and they, they don't really do anything to the bees. The bees, I mean, they get other things like, they get into like this, like a fatty long leg spider. They don't really do anything. But the thing that kills the bees, and why a lot of, there's a lot of colony losses, they get mites on them. Varroa destructor mites. It's like a tick for bees. It's like, it's, it's like if you had a tick the size of a dinner plate on you, sucking the blood out of you. So then it, by winter time it weakens them. And they get what's called PMS. No joke. Parasitic mite syndrome. And if I could find a mite. And these 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 bees, these colonies are pretty healthy, so they're not like overrun with them, but usually what you do is you do like a, either a powder test or an ether roll, they call it. Uh, you count. You take a mite count, take about a pound, cup of bees, roll them in sugar or, or uh, alcohol, and then count how many mites come off. Oh, see, this is all just, they're just filling this up with nectar. It's not ripe honey yet, it's, it's nectar. 
And if you could, you could stick your finger in there and taste it, but look at that. Your chicken. This is nice, that's nice. All, all filled. So I'm just gonna put this back and add another, but I'm just gonna add, I'm gonna top super this one, which means I'm just gonna add, since they're still working on this one, I'm just gonna put it, add another box to the top. I gotta get one more frame. When you put them on, you put them on when they're just foundation, you gotta put 10 frames in there. Because, as you can see, there's a, there's a space. And bees have what's called bee space. Anything more than three eighths of an inch, and they will, they'll take this comb and they'll, They'll build it in between that space. And they'll make what's called burr comb. And they'll just this go crazy. So when you first start this foundation, you gotta put 10 frames in so they build it out evenly. Beekeeper's uh, suit looks like. It's uh, not clean. I'm putting my suit, I'm suiting up today because they're going to be, uh, it's all over. It's the real deal. Plenty of bees flying around all over the place. I'm going to be stealing their honey. I may not be happy about it. I won't be angry, but I am taking their stuff. Uh huh. Ready for new super, they start building fresh comas, white stuff on top. And this one's really, really loaded up. Put that down gently. Smoke these guys good. Of honey in there, so it's heavy. Uh, that's how we get to this part. I'm not gonna go behind me because I'm gonna shake them off and brush them off in the front or to the side. Right?
You make it one or two stragglers. Box. Cover up. Some people use a, uh, a leaf blower and tip it on its side and blow them out, but I think that's kind of invasive, kind of rude, and the damage, they, they can get hurt, killed. So I just, this is a little more time consuming, but just what I do. So when you put in eight frames, see how, see how much thicker, how wide they make it? But that's, that's thick right there. I noticed some, some giant, what we used to call bumblebees. Yeah, they'll try and sneak in. Bumblebees will try and sneak in, sometimes wasps will. But they, uh, they'll actually like, uh, they have security guards out front. They have guard bees. I've seen them like a I've seen a yellow jacket try and get in. They actually like uh, they will bum rush the yellow jacket four or five at a time and kick throw them out. Like you don't belong here. Get out. Back behind the red velvet rope. You're out here. <laughs> yeah, they don't. They don't. Uh, uh, what can I say? They don't mess around. <laughs> they built on the side of the wall there. It's for you. It's a heart. <laughs> oh! So they filled this with nectar, and then they ripened it, and then they, it gets down to a certain percentage of moisture under like 14% around there somewhere. They, uh, they seal it off, and then that's, that's honey. Nice light honey.
the, my mentor Joe Baddock, God, God, God bless him and rest his soul. He he taught me like a good 75% of everything I know about bees. And uh, he was old school. He was Slovenian. He did he did everything old school. So and then uh, he passed away about three years ago. And uh, I've been teaching a couple other people. Not really teaching, but just giving. I don't, I'm like an advisor. I don't really like to say like you know what I mean. I'm more advise people because a lot of things that I say don't really work out that way because bees are bees are bees do funny things and uh, you know they are the, the workers are women so you never know what they're gonna do. I had to throw that in there. <laughs> you ever watch those shows hunting Bigfoot? Uh huh. And they're out there and they're going and they're going hoot and they're hooting making this satchwatch noise. They're going hoot whatever. <laughs> And it's sick, it's sounding back, whatever it is. I said, you know that's another bunch of stupid Bigfoot hunters out there in the woods doing the same exact thing a mile away from you. That is no Bigfoot. This is how you extract the honey. You take the frames that we took out of the hives the other day that are now free of bees. Place them on top of this uncapping tank that I have here on the board. And you take this hot knife, it's electric, plugs in, it's to be about a hundred and something degrees, I'm not sure. And it basically just takes the caps off, melts them, and cuts them right off. Just go like that. Usually do it a little better than this. This stuff. Oh. Sometimes a sawing motion works better. see how it sits in here this one holds nine frames it's a hand crank one you can buy one with a motor but obviously they cost a lot more and then you do that to each frame until you get nine you put it in it's hand cranked and you spin them out wobbly because there's only one in there it's not it's off centered and the centrifugal force spins the honey out of the cells and then it goes into this this is a stainless steel food grade tank and in between these two tanks there's a there's a uh, there's a stainless steel screen here I do it in the garage the garage is well right now it's 80 degrees in here in July it gets to be about I'd say 90 degrees in here. You don't want to heat up the honey any more than 100 degrees because then it breaks down any of the enzymes that are in it. A lot of the honey that's store honey is like pasteurized. If you see that, don't you don't need to pasteurize honey. They, they force filter it. filters out any of the pollen that's in it and any of the beneficial enzymes and nutrients in there. I mean, a lot of the store-bought honey technically isn't honey. And then... Basically, I, I do that until this is full. There are holes in the bottom of this and it goes through the stainless filter. It takes about probably three to four honey supers until it's filled and then probably nothing's gonna come out of this because I didn't, I only put that one frame in there, but there's a cap on here. The honey pours out of there if it was full. That's that's where that goes. That's about it. 
That's the extraction, the basic extraction process. I'll do another one. Bees get most of their nectar from trees. People don't realize that. They think that it's all from like flowers. Like 80% like of the nectar that they collect to make honey is from black locust, linden, and, and uh, tulip poplar trees. Flowering trees they collect it from. It makes this nice light honey. Bees don't need us, we need bees. Are you watching my finger? Watch some bats and bull. What happened like this? I gotta go down. I'm going down to the basement to run some bees. Oh my god.